Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing a very, very, very exciting video because I'm talking about my favourite books of 2020. And as I've said in some previous videos, 2020 was my best reading year ever by far. It was such a good year. I had so, so, so many new favourites. But I've managed to narrow it down to my top 10 of 2020. And just quickly before we get into the video, I want to make a little announcement. So over the next few months, I'm going to be hosting a read along with my friend Finn from Evidently Bookish. And we're going to be reading Melinda Lowe's books. So Melinda Lowe has been writing sapphic books for quite a while. I think actually her book Ash was the first or one of the first sapphic books in YA, which is just amazing. And with her new book coming out this year, Last Night at the Telegraph Club, which I talked about in one of my 2020 releases videos, we just thought it'd be a great idea to read through her backlist a bit. So I will leave all of the information about the read along down below, the dates, the books, all of that. And yes, I'm just very, very, very excited to be doing this. Just her books sound so good. You've got Lesbian Cinderella, you've got 1950 San Francisco Lesbian Bar Scene, you've got a whole mix and I'm just really excited to finally pick up some of these books that have been such a such a staple in the queer book world. And yes, without further ado, let's get into my favourite books of 2020. So I'm just going to do this in the order I read them and I have to apologise for the first books I talk about because I think I might struggle to recall some of the details because it has been a while and I've read an awful lot of books since then. Hopefully I still remember enough. <laughs> so the first book I want to talk about is I Wish You All The Best by Mason Deaver. So this book follows a non-binary main character called Ben and Ben comes out to their parents and they're kicked out really. It does not go well and they end up having to live with their estranged sister and settling in a new school, meeting new people, lots of things like that, and also having quite a challenging time with identity and with mental health. This book deals with some quite heavy topics, you know, such as them being kicked out and uh, struggles with mental health. I think they have depression and anxiety, but the book is not depressing. It is such a joyful read. I really, really really loved reading this. This book was the first book I'd read in a while where I'd just been so entrenched in the book and could not put it down and you know you'd read a hundred pages and not even notice kind of thing and I don't do that I'm very bad for constantly looking at the page number but oh I remember just sitting and reading this almost completely in a day it was incredible. So within this you as I've said, you've got mental health and I love the way Mason Deaver writes about mental health and taking medication, going to therapy. And I think that's so, so, so important to see in YA and it's all just represented wonderfully here. You've also got Ben making new friends at their new school and it's just lovely. I loved the friend group and I loved the romance as well. We got Nathan here. Oh, he's, he's just fab and so supportive of Ben and just an adorable relationship all around. And yeah, I just, I adored the way the book made me feel in terms of just, as I've said, how into it I was and feeling like I loved reading again when I'd been struggling for a bit. And I just loved the story, the characters, everything about it. It was just wonderful. Oh, uh, <laughs> I just, I really did love it. I realise that I'm really, really bad at talking about books that I love. You know, when you go to write a review and if it's a bad book, it's so easy to be like, I hated that, I hated that, that was done badly. But I mean, it's a good book. It's just no words to describe how good it is. And that's how I feel with this one. It's just, it's a wonderful book. And it gives a very uplifting message to trans youth. And that is so important. And I'm so glad it exists. The next book I want to talk about is Camp by Elsie Rosen. I read an arc of this back in springtime and it was just incredible as well. It's another one that I just flew through. I was meant to be buddy reading it over a few days with some friends and I kind of didn't 
buddy read it properly. I just flew through on my own because I was so into it. It's so good. So this takes place at a summer camp for queer kids and I love this so much. I really wish something like this existed and I could have gone. Oh, I just yanked my earring. It, oh, it's just the the camp just it has such positivity and vibes and I loved it. It's so queer positive. Like this camp and this book is just so unapologetically queer and oh I loved it. And so you follow a main character called Randy and he's been going to this camp for a few years now and he has a big crush on one of the other guys called Hudson. And Hudson is rather masculine, you know, sporty and all that. And he only ever goes for guys that are like him. And Randy is not. Randy is a big fan of musical theatre, of fashion. He's always got his nails painted. He's definitely a much more flamboyant gay. And he decides in order to win Hudson's attention, he is going to become what Hudson likes, more masculine. And so he spends a whole year before summer getting ready for this, you know, joining sports teams, cutting his hair, all of that. So when he shows up, he is almost unrecognisable. And so him and Hudson end up having their summertime romance. And it is a lot, a lot of fun. I have to say, when I read the description, I thought it might be a bit cringy with Randy impersonating someone completely different. And yes, there were moments, but it wasn't you know, a massive cringe fest. It was really, really enjoyable. I also really loved Randy's friends and his relationship with them and them letting him make his own mistakes, really, and being there for him. And I thought it was very, very important to show that kind of support and positivity. And there are also discussions in this book of toxic masculinity and its place in the queer community, particularly among gay men. And I just thought this was so important as well. And it's just wrapped up in this lovely sweet summertime romance and it's just such a good book, such an important book, such an emphasis on queer community and identity and such a just wholesome environment and I just loved it so much. It's about being true to yourself and I love that. I think that's a big theme and actually quite a few of the books I've picked out, just identity and being true to yourself. And, oh, Good stuff. The next book I want to talk about is Hideous Beauty by William Hussey. This is another book I read as an arc earlier in the year and it's another one that I just adored, funnily enough, in a favourites video. So this is a romantic thriller mystery type book and you follow a main character called Dylan and right before the book starts Dylan and his boyfriend Ellis are outed and it seems to be going, you know, okay. And so as the book starts, they end up going to a school dance together and they're, you know, having a blast and then suddenly Ellis starts acting weird. And he'd been doing that over winter bit, but he'd been back to normal now. And so they leave the dance and on, and on their way back, they get into a car crash and quite tragically, Ellis dies. So <laughs> it's, it's perhaps not the happiest of stories. And when Dylan wakes up in the hospital, he is absolutely sure that this was no accident or that there's some other forces at play here because when their car was in the river he is absolutely certain that someone pulled him out and left Ellis to drown and so he's trying to solve this mystery surrounding Ellis's death and his strange behaviour at the dance and previously before that and this book had me in tears <laughs> right from the beginning like it's on the back of the book that Ellis dies so early on but still reading it I was in tears and this is just one I raced through. It was so good as well, so gripping and I just really really adored reading it. It had me emotional quite a few times and before this year I didn't really cry at books. That's definitely been a new development of this year and this is one of the ones that just really got to me. One of the big things I loved about this book was how the theme of acceptance was handled. Because as I said, Dylan and Ellis were outed and so Dylan is also kind of dealing still with that and with how people are responding to that, particularly his parents. And so you see this type of superficial surface level acceptance from his parents and 
you also see how that is not enough and the acceptance needs to be complete and it needs to be on the terms of the person being accepted and I just thought it was just handled so well and I loved it. It's such an interesting theme particularly relating to queer identity and I loved it an awful lot. And so this book is not all sad. I find that it just has such an uplifting hopeful message to it even though it's quite a dark subject matter and you also have a kind of almost dual timeline following Dylan and Alice's relationship kind of juxtaposed on top of the mystery and so you're getting these lovely happy flashes and just falling in love with their relationship and their characters and it just all works so 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 well together and I really 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 loved it. <laughs> the next book I want to talk about is Music from Another World by Robin Talley this is yet another book that I originally read as an ARC. This is told through an epistolary, I think that's how you pronounce it, a format and so through diary entries and letters and it is from the perspective of two girls living in California in the 70s. You have got Tammy who lives in Orange County and she's a member of this very very uber religious incredibly homophobic family and she is a closeted lesbian. Obviously this is not an ideal situation and she's really struggling at the time and the book starts with her and a letter she has written to Harvey Milk who was a very prominent gay politician at the time and she writes these letters to Harvey as like a diary entry not with intention of sending them and right from the beginning I just connected with her so much and it had me angry, it had me in tears, it had me all of that right at the beginning and I, I just knew straight away this was going to be something very incredible and so Tammy is assigned to be a pen pal to Sharon and Sharon is living in San Francisco and she also goes to a Catholic school it's like a Christian school pen pal thing going on and she is struggling because she's also from a religious background but she's recently discovered that her brother is gay and she's kind of trying to reconcile that with what she's been taught and the, and the environment that she finds herself in. And so through their diary entries and their letters you see the girls getting closer and it's just it's so well written. It felt real, these felt like real people, like I was just reading actual diary entries and letters from the time, it was incredible. And so this book it also explores a lot of the movements happening at this time. It's 1977, you've got feminists, you've got gay movement in San Francisco especially and this was so interesting to read about. It's definitely, this book definitely had me wanting to pick up more historical fiction, particularly about queer historical fiction and oh it just it was so good, so raw and feeling and and so obviously with the subject matter, with the time, the book can be very very dark at times, very very sad, very upsetting because of the situation particularly Tammy finds herself in but there's just such an uplifting message and feeling to the book and I, <laughs> I don't want to spoil but oh it, really it just, it made me so hopeful and I really really just adored it. This book was just it was incredible and so thought-provoking and feeling-provoking, there's probably a better word than that and it's just it's incredible. <laughs> you know you've got all these scenes happening in San Francisco at this time, you know the punk scene, feminist movements, the queer movements that I've mentioned and seeing our characters take part in these movements was just it was incredible, I loved it. Reading about these scenes and what was happening at this time through the characters felt like I was there. It was, it was just so so well done and so enjoyable to read. Just another one that absolutely flew through. It was just amazing. The next book I want to talk about is The Falling in Love Montage by Kira Smith and I do not think that anyone will be surprised to see this one on this list. This is a book that I've obviously spoken about a lot on my channel, it just, it really does mean the world to me. So this follows a main character called Searsha and she's just finished high school and she's in the summer in between 
finishing school and starting something else. And, and so she is struggling with this decision of what she wants to do with her future and also some more personal problems. Her mother is suffering from dementia, she's fallen out with her friends, her father's possibly getting remarried. And so she ends up going to a kind of end of school year party at her nemesis Oliver's house. I love Oliver. He is truly the himbo to Sears as lesbian. It's incredible. Love them. They've got such good banter. But she goes to this party and there she meets Ruby. And they've just got this absolute instant attraction to each other. And they end up either stealing or rescuing a kitten together. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. But Searsha has a new relationship through. But, you know, determined as ever, Ruby comes up with an idea. To have a summer fling, really. A relationship with a designated endpoint where they will just have the falling in love montage like they do in rom-coms that Ruby adores. And then when it's over, it's over. Yeah, I just loved reading these dates. They were so sweet. And I'm not sure how much I've spoken about it on this channel, how much this book means to me. But I read this at a time when I was really, really struggling with kind of accepting my own sexuality and in particularly the label lesbian. So I had figured out probably when I was like 12 or so that I thought I was bi, that I liked girls. I repressed this and then a couple of years ago I was, I started to accept it. But then maybe, maybe a year ago now I realized I kind of realized that I might be a lesbian but I just I could not bring myself to accept this label just lots of personal issues internalized homophobia all of that but I read this book just at the absolute perfect time and just seeing such loud and proud lesbians on page seeing the word lesbian on page just had this amazing impact on me and it was just really really key in me accepting myself and accepting that part of my identity and that is why it is firmly on my favourite books of all time list because even though it's maybe not the perfect book or whatever it just had such an incredible impact on me and I'm very very grateful for that. Another thing I loved was that I just related to Searsha, our main character, so so much so there's so many similarities between us in our kind of ways of thinking and everything I've never ever ever felt so seen by a character than by Searsha who was amazing it was just this surreal moment when I'd finally felt seen and there's so many reasons this book means a lot to me and that's definitely one of them and I also I just adored the kind of humanity of this book. The focus on human connection, whether between obviously our main characters, Stacia and Ruby, but they also just meet a few other characters. You know, like in Ronco, when you meet a random stranger and they give you amazing life advice. They had a few moments like that and there's just this connection and humanity and I don't even know if that's a proper word to describe it, but it was just, I loved it so much. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think at some point this year I'm going to reread this and annotate it. I think I might do a kind of just video dedicated to it and really get all my feelings out about it if that's something people are interested in. <laughs> but yes, this book means the absolute, absolute, absolute world to me. I love it so much. And also just because I've not shared it on here or I don't think anywhere really, I have two copies of this book. I have paperback and I have the hardback and the hardback was actually sent to me by Kira Smith after I shared a video clip of me talking a bit about it in my Pride Book Rex video way back in summer and it's signed and personalised and <laughs> and oh it just it makes me so emotional I love it so 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 much the next book I want to talk about is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. You know how I said I didn't cry much at books before this year? <laughs> I think the most I've ever cried at any form of media was this book. I was just, I was sobbing for like the last 100 pages and then for quite a while afterwards and for like 
a week after I read it, if I even thought about the book, I'd be tearing up. It just had such an emotional impact on me. So this follows an old Hollywood starlet called Evelyn Hugo. And at present, she's like in her 80s and she's decided that she wants a book written that completely tells her full story, the complete honest truth. And so she asks a young journalist called Monique Grant to do this. And so this book follows her and Monique's meetings together to write Evelyn's story. So this follows Evelyn from growing up quite poor to making her way to Los Angeles and starting a career in film when she was really quite young in the 50s, through seven marriages and then through leaving showbiz at the end of the 80s. And this book is just, it's incredible. It's so, so, so well written. I really did love Evelyn and I really loved her friends, some of her romances. Um, one of her friends, Harry Cameron, I just loved their friendship so much. And I don't want to spoil the book, so I'm trying not to say this in a spoilery way, but for those that have read it, when Evelyn and Harry and Celia and her husband are all living in New York and they're just so happy, happy, happy. I really love that part of the book so much. I just think about it sometimes. And so we discover that Evelyn is bisexual and that she had a relationship with another starlet at the time, Celia St. James. And I also just adored their relationship. I adored Celia and this kind of look into queer life in Hollywood at this time and oof, it, I just, it was so good, so moving, so impactful. This book feels so nostalgic for this glory period of Hollywood and film but it also doesn't shy away from showing Hollywood to be this gritty, quite dark often place and it's just incredibly well written, incredible character, so, so moving. I just love it so much. <laughs> the next book I want to talk about is The Scapegracers by Hannah Abigail Clark. This is another all-time favourite. I think I'd say my top three books of the year was these past two books I've just mentioned and The Scapegracers. I just adored so much. This is another one I was lucky enough to read an arc of. I'm just so grateful I got to read arcs this year because as you can see so many of them have become favourites. And yes, yeah, so this follows Sideways Pike who is a teenage lesbian witch and she's very content just being on the outskirts of social circles of school just performing little magic tricks but when the three popular girls at school invite her to their Halloween party to perform a spell she ends up sucked into their friend group and this book is just this ode to teenage girls to friendship into the, into weirdos and i love it so much the absolute standout amazing parts of this book was the friendship between these four girls so you've got sideways as i've mentioned and she's this absolute grump <laughs> i love her so much she's a grump she's a loner but she's a softy inside and you've also got Ying, who is like the mum friend. I love her. She's just, <laughs> she's just so caring and all of these girls love each other so much and care for each other so much and it's so clear in all of their characters. And you've got Daisy, who is just a right badass. <laughs> you know, she would kill for her friends and I love her. And Yates, who's just an absolute sweetheart. I would die for her. I love her so much. And the relationship these four girls have with each other is just this complete ride or die even as they've only just really met sideways and only just accepted her into their friend group it's just they would do anything for each other and it's just this unconditional unflinching love and i love it and so you've got magical elements and lots of cool fun witchy stuff happening and it's it's just a blast it's so fun but you know the main part is the friendship and the relationship the girls have and I just absolutely adored it. It's got this intricate gothic writing style but very much the narration of a teenage girl and it works so so well. It's just a joy to read. I love the writing style, the narration, all of it so much. 
it is also a book that is just incredibly lesbian and that's just something else I absolutely adored and like the way that Sideways and her narration describes the girls it's just it's so gay <laughs> oh it's so 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 good <laughs> I feel like I'm just repeating that for all of them but like they're in this video for a reason okay these are my top recommendations of all time I just highly 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 recommend this one I cannot wait to pick up the sequel and see where the skate racer takes us the next book I want to talk about is Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar this is another book that I read almost in one sitting that I just flew through completely gripped me was it incredible so this follows a trans boy called Felix and he is in high school at the moment and it's summer and he's doing some summer art classes and Felix ends up being the victim of some transphobia when someone puts up old pictures of him alongside his dead name in the gallery of the school for everyone to see and sending him anonymous transphobic messages and in Felix's plan to try and figure out who this could possibly be he kind of ends up in this sort of quasi love triangle I think the synopsis calls it this is just such a fun story of identity and loving yourself and it's just such a good time one that as I said I just flew through I loved the characters I loved the story it was just amazing I particularly loved Felix's relationship with his best friend they just had this absolute amazing relationship and they cared for each other so 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 much it was just very ride or die and I loved it I just loved all the trans positivity and joy and it's such a good book and yes this is an incredibly important book for in terms of its representation for a black trans boy but also it's just a fun book and it is one that I just highly recommend it's the perfect summer read to just fall into and let it take you on a wee adventure and I'm very sorry there's some background noise the next book I want to talk about is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas so this is another book with a trans main character and this time you've got Yadriel and so Yadriel is part of a Bruje community in LA and so Bruje is a Spanish word for the like witch but it's not the perfect translation for this but you've got these magical elements basically to the book and on Abruhe's 15th birthday they do a ceremony to officially join the community and there's a different one for boys and girls and because Yadriel is trans he was not really allowed to do the ceremony because he wanted to do the boys one and he wasn't allowed and so at the start of this book you find him doing it himself in secret later on with his cousin Maritza I love her and so Brujos the men they can summon ghosts and it is their job really to guide spirits to the underworld to, and to rest and so Yadriel summons a ghost and he is aiming to summon the ghost of his cousin who has just suddenly disappeared and so you can solve the mystery and everything's fab it's that everyone loves him he proves himself to his father who's the leader of their community it does not go to plan because instead he summons Julian and Julian is like the bad boy of their school and he is just an excited puppy really and so Yadriel and Maritza and Julian all end up kind of working to figure out how Julian's died and solving that mystery rather than the mystery of Yadriel's cousin and I just loved following them on this journey and I loved so, I just loved everything about this book this is another one I really just struggled to put down I actually did a reading vlog for it and I kept putting off doing everything I needed to do because I just wanted to sit and read this all day because it was just so engaging so fun and it's just oh, such a good book I just I loved the magic and how incredibly Latini it was down to its core and this massive community and family that they've got it was it's just such a joy to read about as well as the trans joy and the romance and the relationships with friends and oh it's so good and I just 
adored this book so 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 much and the final book i'm going to talk about in this video is one last stop by casey mckiston so this is an arc this book doesn't come out until june this year and it needs to be on your radar it is just incredible so i actually have a full video review of it which i'll link down below if you do want to know more and actually i've got reviews for most of these books on just in goodreads so i'll link those as well so this is from the author of red white and royal blue and it is also a, an adult rom-com and this follows a main character called august who's just moved to new york city for a kind of fresh start and so we follow her getting an apartment getting a job all these normal things and she ends up on the subway of course as you do living in new york and when she's there she meets jane they have of course this kind of instant attraction connection and we discover as jane seems to always be on the subway when august does that jane is trapped there and she has been for quite a while so she has been displaced from the seven days and so you're following these two characters and them kind of working to solve this mystery of how jane's gotten there and she's also lost most of her memories and trying to figure that out as well all while falling in love and it is just such a good book <laughs> i i really love the way casey mckiston writes she creates these really authentic characters and it's such a talent you know everything from the narrative to the conversations to just the way they all act the chemistry when they have with each other is so real it's so good just joy to read honestly and the romance is of course incredible and i love it so much i particularly love jane our love interest she's just so damn cool and i would also fall in love with her i cannot blame august something i particularly loved about this book was the kind of themes really of growing up and of loneliness of not really finding your place in your people yet and that just really hit home with me and it's just a theme that i really liked reading about and i really loved the kind of hopefulness to it in this book it was just I don't know how many times I can say that but these are this book and all of these books are just so damn good and I highly 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 recommend them yeah I just it's so good you've got an amazing queer found family with August's roommates I love them they're amazing and yeah I do recommend you watch my video review if you want to know more I it's completely spoiler free and I talk about the characters a lot because there's just so much to talk about because they're all so cool but yes this book incredible amazing show-stopping highly 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 recommend and that is my top 10 books of 2020 i hope you have enjoyed this video and it would mean a lot if you could leave a like a comment subscribe if you haven't you know tell me what your favorite book of 2020 was have you read any of these anything like that i'd love to know i need some recommendations like tell me your faves <laughs> And yeah i'll be leaving all the links i've mentioned down below and remember to check out the read-along information it's going to be a lot of fun it's hopefully going to be a giveaway and a live show as well so it's really something worth getting involved in you of course only need to read the books that you're interested in so don't worry if they don't all appeal or if you don't think you'll manage them you can do whatever you like and it's it's just gonna be a lot of fun and yes thank you very 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 much for watching i hope you have enjoyed and i'll see you with another video soon